Hi, welcome to my presentation on orphan drugs. My name is Alyssa Bodie, and I'm a first year pharmacy student. And the objective of my presentation is to understand what orphan drugs and orphan diseases are, and then to discuss cystic fibrosis as an orphan disease and its possible treatments. The definition of a rare disease was created by Congress in the Orphan Drug Act of 1983, and its definition is to be a condition that affects fewer than 200,000 people in the U.S. Orphan diseases are known as orphan diseases because drug companies are often not interested in adopting them to develop uh, treatments as there's little profit due to their cost of development and limited patient population. There may be as many as 7,000 rare diseases, but the total number of Americans living with a rare disease is estimated to be between 25 to 30 million. So while individual diseases may be rare, the total number of people with a rare disease is large. And cystic fibrosis is an example of an orphan disease. There are many different causes of rare diseases. And while most rare diseases are genetic in origin, many causes are not well understood. Even if the cause of a rare disease is identified, researchers may still not understand how the disease functions or how to properly treat it. Genetic mutations are roughly 80% of the cause and can be inherited or arise as a sporadic mutation. And they can also affect one gene or many genes. Some infections are thought to be rare worldwide and exposure to natural or manufactured toxic substances can also cause rare diseases and then other causes listed here are autoimmune diseases cancers nutritional deficiency injuries adverse effects to treatments as well as many other causes and if you look over to this graph you can see genetics is a major cause of the orphan diseases so an orphan drug is any is any drug used to treat an orphan or rare disease. The drug is usually not developed by the pharmaceutical industry for economic reasons, but for public health needs. The reason is because the process of drug discovery from a new molecule to its marketing is long, expensive, and uncertain. So developing a drug for a rare disease might not allow the recovery of the capital invested in its research. Since the disease is so rare, there are financial incentives for development due to the Orphan Drug Act, and these incentives include government grants for development, tax breaks on clinical study costs, extended market exclusivity, and exemption from application filing fees. There are companies dedicated specifically to developing orphan drugs, and these orphan drugs can be products intended to treat rare diseases. They can be products that have been withdrawn from the market for economic or therapeutic reasons. They could be products that are used for frequent diseases but have not been developed yet for a rare indication, or it could be products that haven't been developed yet. And the challenges that are associated with orphan drugs include the price for patients to pay, how poorly understood the disease can be, limited public awareness about the drugs or the disease, and the limited treatment availability. So what is cystic fibrosis? It's a rare and progressive and life-threatening genetic orphan disease caused by mutation in the CFTR gene. The CFTR protein is made by the CFTR gene and is an ABC transporter protein that controls the movement of charged ions across cell membranes. The mutation can cause defective or missing CFTR proteins, which means that salts cannot cross the membranes normally. And this process is essential to produce secretions such as tears, mucus, digestive enzymes, saliva, and sweat. Without the CFTR protein functioning normally, cells can't move chloride, which is a component of salt to the cell surface. And without chloride there to attract water, a thick and sticky mucus can build up in different tissues and organs especially the lungs and the digestive tract where there are severe respiratory and digestive problems associated with cystic fibrosis. In the lungs specifically, it can interfere with breathing because the mucus can block airways and it can also cause respiratory infections or inflammation when the mucus traps germs and bacteria there. In the pancreas, the mucus buildup can prevent the release of digestive enzymes, which affects food and nutrient absorption, resulting in malnutrition and poor growth. 
And in the liver, a thick mucus can block the bile duct, causing liver disease. And then also listed here are some common symptoms, which include salty skin, poor growth, weight loss, bulky, greasy stool, lung infections, respiratory problem, problems, and blockage of the small intestine. So Trikafta is an orphan drug for the treatment of cystic fibrosis. It is the first approved cystic fibrosis treatment for patients six years and older with one or more F508 DEL mutations or mutation in the CFTR gene that is responsive to this drug. The F508 DEL mutation affects them up to 90% of cystic fibrosis patients, and it is characterized by a deletion of the phenylalanine 508 amino acid that causes a premature stop signal, making truncated or shorter than normal CFTR proteins. Thus, this protein with its impacted structure can't be moved to the cell surface correctly or work correctly at the cell surface, which causes the abnormal ion transport. Trikafta is a combination of three drugs trying to make the CFTR protein more effective. And the three drugs are Alexacaftor, Ivacaftor, and Tezacaftor. And it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars per year. And if you look over at the right, there's the dosing schedule for Trikafta. There's a morning and an evening dose separated by 12 hours. And then it's also separated ages 6 through 11 under 30 kilograms, and then ages 6 through 11 over 30 kilograms, and 12 years and older. So Trikafta works as a CFTR modulator in that it tries to improve the amount and function of CFTR proteins at the cell surface. Alexacaftor and Tezacaftor are both correctors in that they bind to the CFTR protein and help more functional CFTR protein to reach the cell surface. They allow the protein to fold into the correct shape and move to the cell surface instead of being degraded. They bind at different sites on the protein and together they have additive effects for CFTR protein processing and tra trafficking. And the third drug in Trikafta is Ivacaftor. And this is a potentiator that keeps the CFTR proteins open longer at the cell surface. And together this allows maintenance of proper flow of water and chloride at the lungs and other cell surfaces to prevent the mucus buildup. Three clinical trials have been performed for Trikafta. The first clinical trial has 403 participants. All were over 12 and had at least one and had one F508 DEL mutation and one minimal function mutation. It was a randomized double blind trial that used a placebo to compare the effects of the drug. It had 200 people taking Trikafta, which consisted of two tablets, each containing Alexacaftor 100 milligrams, Tezacaftor 50 milligrams, and Ivacaftor 75 milligrams in the morning, and one tablet containing Ivacaftor 150 in the evening, about 12 hours later. And then there was 203 people taking a placebo with a fat-containing food for 24 weeks. And overall, this trial showed improvements in lung functioning for the patients taking Trikafta compared to those taking the placebo. Specifically, there was an increased lung function by 13.8 percentage points compared to the placebo after four weeks and by 14.3 percentage points compared to the placebo after 24 weeks. Additionally, the drug was generally tolerated well and overall there was a decrease in sweat chloride, which is the salt in your sweat by 41.2 millimoles per liter after four weeks and 41.8 millimoles per liter after 24 weeks. There were also fewer pulmonary exacerbations, which decreased by 63%, and there were 71% less pulmonary exacerbation that resulted in hospitalization and 78% less that led to IV antibiotic use. There was also an improvement in CF in cystic fibrosis respiratory symptoms by 20.2 points, and it also increased body mass index by one kilogram per meter squared. The second clinical trial had 107 patients who had two F508 DEL mutation copies. All were over 12 once again, and it was a randomized double blind trial. 
all patients received Simdeco, which is Tezacaftor and Ivacaftor for four weeks, and then half continued on the Simdeco, which was one tablet containing Tezacaftor 100 milligrams, Ivacaftor 150 milligrams in the morning, and one tablet containing Ivacaftor 150 milligrams in the evening, about 12 hours later. And then the other half switched to Tricafta, which was two tablets each containing Alexacaftor 100 milligram. Tezacaftor 50 milligrams and Ivacaftor 75 milligrams in the morning and one tablet containing Ivacaftor 150 milligrams in the evening about 12 hours later. And the results showed that there was an increase in lung function with Trikafta compared to the Simdeco by 10 percentage points after four weeks. There was a decrease in chloride in sweat chloride by 45.1 millimoles per liter after four weeks and there was improvement in cystic fibrosis respiratory symptoms by 17.4 points. It was again generally tolerated well by the patients. The third clinical trial incorporated 66 children ages 6 to 11 with the F508 DEL mutation and a mutation defined in the study or simply two copies of the F508 DEL mutation. Each child in the study took Trikafta every 12 hours for 24 weeks with a fat-containing food and the dose was based on the weight. Since there is no placebo used in the study, all children were taking the drug. One can't confirm if the results are due to the drug or not since there's no, nothing to compare to. However, the results were similar to those in the trial that was above 12 years old. Um, once again, the lung function increased this time by 10.2 percentage points after 24 weeks. Sweat chloride decreased by 60.9 millimoles per liter after 24 weeks and respiratory symptoms increased by seven points. And lastly, the BMI uh, increased by one kilogram per millimeter squared. Per meter squared, sorry. Another orphan drug for cystic fibrosis is Spiro 2101. It is an inhaled adeno associated virus gene therapy that carries the genetic sequence of the healthy CFTR proteins to produce a functional CFTR protein. Basically, it replaces a defective CFTR regulator gene by sending in the right gene. And adeno-associated virus capsid is engineered to, to help and target the human airway epithelium. There are over 1,700 CFTR mutations, and this drug is beneficial for patients that have class one mutations or failure to tolerate any of the existing CFTR modulator drugs. A class one mutation is a case in which there, the patient has no messenger RNA produced for the CFTR protein or the mRNA is damaged and cannot be turned into a protein. And the FDA has granted this drug, uh, orphan drug and rare pediatric disease designations. Some other orphan drugs for cystic fibrosis include KB407 and SPL84-23-1. Specifically, KB407 is another inhaled therapy. It has two healthy copies of the full-length CFTR gene delivered directly to the patient's lung tissues. It is delivered in a safe, non-integrating and modified herpes simplex virus type one. It does not cause vi virus but can insert genetic material into the cells. In lab and animal studies, it is shown to deliver and restore CFTR protein production. Repeat and adjusted doses of this drug were well tolerated and there was no adverse effects. Um, KB407 throughout the lung tissue uh, with little to no vector was found in other tissues. The activity persisted in the lung tissue at least 28 days after the last dose, suggesting that the treatment's effects were sustained. And it is replication defective. On September 29, 2021, this drug was granted approval for a phase one clinical, clinical study of inhaled KB407 in patients that have cystic fibrosis. The phase one study is expected to enroll up to 13 adults, and the trial is open to all to patients with all types of disease causing mutations. Although patients who are taking CFTR modulators or have taken them within seven days of the first KB407 dose are not eligible to participate. Lastly, the SPL84-23-1 drug is another inhalation gene therapy. 
This time for the 3849 plus 10 KB C to T mutation. This mutation causes splicing defects in the CFTR gene where the inclusion of 84 intronic nucleotides has a, creates a premature stop codon. And this creates a degraded RNA strand in formation of shortened non-functional CFTR proteins. So this drug works as an antisense oligonucleotide in that it penetrates target cells and prevents the inclusion of intronic nucleotides to allow the development of a full functioning NCFTR protein. All right, and here's my contact information for any questions you may have. This is my email. And then here are a bunch of the references that I used to create this presentation. Thank you for listening.